So, hi there, welcome to a video of the Red Devil's Den. We have so much to look at over just literally the past 24 hours, huge, huge developments with Manchester United. When it comes to the Glazers, when it comes to Anthony, when it comes to a few things that has been said by ex-players, particularly Roy Keane, some very, very interesting things. But I guess we'll start on the Anthony thing because that is a huge story. He's been dropped from the Brazilian national team um, for specific claims that have been made against him um, by someone who was close to him and who, was, who he was close to. Um, now the ball is kind of in Manchester United's court and we've been told by a few reports that have come out that they are looking at possibly putting him out of the team or just maybe even suspending him for the time period while this um, inquiry into what has happened is going on around him. And this is this thing with Manchester United is just becoming a thing for some reason and we don't know why. It's just, it's... It seems to be just doing this, like the whole, the team, around the team, the upper levels, the lower levels, everything just seems to be going incredibly wrong. Um, and now we have this thing come out with Anthony just a few days after Mason Greenwood has moved to Spain on loan after the big debacle that happened with there. Um, and again, this is just... Um, I don't know if this is just a very unlucky period for Manchester United. Maybe it is. Maybe they just don't have that much luck on their side like they did in the years of Sir Alex Ferguson, which I don't think it was luck. Maybe it was luck. But if luck is the thing, the luck has run out. Clearly it's run out. There's no more luck anymore. Um, the lady who brings luck is not on our side anymore and things seem to be going very, very wrong. This is the, this is the interesting thing, though. With this specific story coming out how funny is it that this is how these things work but this is because it's just so unlucky sancho releases a statement on sunday about him being the scapegoat and how he thinks the manager is favoring anthony monday a report comes out that the brazil national team has now put anthony out of the team tuesday a report comes out that manchester united are now looking to suspend anthony while this whole process is going on and I'm pretty sure Jaden Sancho is sitting there going, hmm, imagine if I didn't put out that statement. I'm in that team against Brighton when we kick off in two weeks' time. He's in that team starting on the right, but now he's probably not in that team. And even if he is going to play in the team, it's again a player power thing. But that's another story. But that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. If we look at it like that, it's just so unlucky. Sancho should be fine by the club. He shouldn't actually be playing for the club. Puts out a statement like that. And in two weeks' time, he's going to be starting that game because Anthony won't be able to play. But that's just the unluckiness of Manchester United. There's just no more luck left. All the luck has run out. We've been running on fumes for a very, very long time. The fumes are done. There's no more gas in the car. It's about to stop. We're busy taking the wheels off. And we're coming to a dead, dead stop very, very soon. And I think the, this story, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, um, is just sort of starting to put everything into context as to how bad this actually is. And I, if results start to go better on the pitch from when we kick back off in two weeks' time against Brighton, maybe then things are going to look up. But because now we don't have club football for so long, it just gives so much time for these negative things to just continue to grow and grow and grow. And every day, there'll be a new story and a new story and a new story all the time. Um, but it looks like Anthony is not going to be playing for Man United. He's not playing for Brazil, which opens the door to Jay and Sancho, of whom we've heard absolutely nothing from the club regarding that statement, which again shows you that this club is run by the players. If the players choose to do something, they do it, and the club just says, go ahead and do your thing. We don't know what the reason for that is, but there's a reason for it, and maybe someday we'll know what it is. The next story that we'll, that, that we'll talk about is one that's also shocking, but also quite understandable considering who the ownership is and who the owners are the glazers the the share price of man united fell to almost 19 and a half dollars last night and they're losing in the in they're losing revenue in the spaces of between 400 to 500 million pounds so huge huge loss for the glazers and i think that is just significant of how bad the club is run um investors aren't that interested anymore because we're not winning anything 
Uh, we're back in the Champions League. It's not good on the it's not good on the pitch, and we're having so many player issues right now. Mason Greenwood, Anthony, Jaden Sancho, Harry Maguire early on in the transfer window. There's just so much unrest around that club, and it is not looking good. Hence why the Glazers have declared that they have lost a lot of money, which kind of makes sense. They probably knew this was coming. Hence why there was no money to be spent in this transfer window because they knew there was going to be a huge, huge loss on the New York Stock Exchange. And it actually happened. They actually saw, foresaw it and it happened. And where does that leave the club? In ruin. It leaves us with a bleak January transfer window. Just yesterday I spoke about a January transfer window. That's definitely not going to happen now unless we sell at least five players or send some players out on loan, or we get loan deals done. But it will definitely, there'll be no incomings in January, none whatsoever. Um, on the sale thing, we're told that the club is still for sale. The club is still on the market. They're still looking at the options of the of the individuals who want to buy it. I'm pretty sure we're waiting for the $6 billion, um, to be announced, or the $6.4 billion, $6.5 billion, which I'm assuming the more that this goes on in the bad way it is, the more buyers are not really going to be that interested or even pay that amount of money for the club because the club is in absolute ruin. And this is my personal opinion on it. The, the, thing, with, the thing with the Glazers has always been this. They're pretty much always looking out for themselves and how they can make the most money out of the club. It's as plain as simple as that. That's pretty much how it is. The reason why we brought Cristiano Ronaldo back to Manchester United, for the Glazers, it wasn't because he's great on the pitch and he's a prolific goal scorer and it's going to be so great for the fans. Yes, it's going to be great for the fans, but the revenue that he's going to bring in is going to be huge. Absolutely huge. And it was huge. And this is pretty much how the Glazers do their thing and how they always have. But unfortunately, it's catching up to them because things are starting to deteriorate within the football club, within the players, within that team on the field. It's starting to infiltrate into there. And it has been infiltrating for a while, but now it's become even, even worse. And the biggest issue is that it's going to impact the team. It's already starting to impact the team. We're going to, I actually foresee us losing a lot more games this season simply because the players are not motivated the players don't know what they're playing for they don't know who they're playing for and it's just complete disarray and i think in the in 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 retrospect now if you look at it there could be no way back unless we have someone with very very big money who's not going to come in and buy the club on debt someone who's actually going to have the money in their hands able to spend within the blink of an eye to come in sort out all the mess, get rid of everyone, including players, and just start from scratch, I think. And this is the the thing with, with having with having that happen. If we if if the if the Glazers plan to stay longer than this season, I don't think they're going to sell, although we do believe they still are going to sell. We don't know if it's true or not. But if they are still here by the end of the season, then I'm pretty much given up. I've pretty much given up already. I don't think the club will get sold anytime soon. But if we look ahead and they're still here, then I pretty much think it won't happen. Then lastly for today, Roy Keane, um, after the match on Sunday, it was released the next morning when he was asked about Manchester United. He already had a few interesting statements earlier in the season when we played Spurs. Spurs. He called us the new Tottenham Hotspurs. He said the way the club is run is awful. The players we have are not up to scratch. Um, and then just two days ago, he said the standards at United are on the floor. And I'm assuming he's referring to the Jaden Sancho thing because there is simply no rules. There's no standards anymore. And nothing seems to be working for the club. There's nothing happening. He's one of the best captains to ever captain Manchester United. Pretty much won everything with the club. Um, an absolute legend to all Man United fans and to Manchester United. And the thing is, he knows what he's speaking about because he's been in that dressing room. He's been through it. He's won it. He's played with some of the best players to ever play. And him saying that the standards of Man United on the ground is is pretty much a damning statement um, for the club. And it just continues. And the point be, continues to be proven. Again, with Anthony, with Jaden Sancho, Mason Greenwood, Harry Maguire, Scott McTominay, players who just refuse to leave, players who just refuse to, they just post anything online, they say anything that they want, and it's just an absolute mess. And 
We don't know what, what's next. What, what is next? What to, where to next? What comes after this? Um, what happens when we kick off against Brighton? Where are we? Is it probably worse? I think it'll probably be worse. Every day we're just getting new stories of bad, bad, bad. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's, uh, there isn't really much positive news other than Amrabat's cool interview yesterday. Um, speaking about how much he, he always admired the club and how happy he is to be here. It's good to have him here. I'm excited to see him in the starting lineup. He's not injured. Martinez is not injured. Lindelof is not injured. So I'm so, so glad for that. No Harry Maguire, no Johnny Evans needed. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments if you are a Man United supporter. And even if you're not a Man United supporter, what is your take as an outside as an outsider on what exactly is happening at Man United? And I'll see you in the next